next speaker is Pere Pérez from FILA, and he will give the presentation called Ultrafast Fiber Lasers for Industry. Okay, um, if I'm not wrong, this is uh, the last, the last, um, last uh, talk, and uh, we have run out of time, so I'm going to try to uh, to be uh, to be um, not to be too long. Um, well, I have to thank first uh, your invitation, uh, Ruben uh, Pascual, since um, indeed we we are I am uh, well I'm the CTO of the company Fila. Uh, we indeed are not uh, directly I involved in the design or manufacturing of photonic integration, uh, but uh, our uh, business is in the ultrafast fiber lasers. Um, indeed, we. We are happy to sponsor this uh, this um, um, this event, even not being uh, directly related to the to the uh, to, to to this to to your business, but we are happy to be uh, and to try to boost this type of uh, events because we really understand that we have uh, uh, we have a, com a lot of synergies between our uh, field of of, of work and, and yours, and. Uh, from what uh, we can see uh, talking with our customers and needs, uh, there is a definite, uh, definite niche of, com of merging uh, ultra-fast fiber laser technology and, and uh, photonic integration. So that's mainly the reason why I understand that uh, it's important for us to be in events like this. Okay, so as I said, uh, our business is uh, the design and um, design, manufacturing, and commercialization of ultra-fast fiber lasers. By ultra-fast lasers, I mean lasers which are pulsed, uh, delivering pulses in the re range of one picosecond or below. And by ultra-fast, also I mean a uh, type of uh, fiber lasers that deliver pulses in the rep rate, uh, high rep rate, uh, in the order of from tens, hundreds of megahertz to several tens of gigahertz. So that is our expertise. We are experts from the, from the uh, very basics, fundamentals of the technology, and we have managed to uh, begin to be um, experts on the uh, manufacturing, uh, manufacturing side of, 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 the, of the chain. So that's um, the idea of uh, the topic of the talk is um, to give you a hint to describe what is the method that we have uh, implemented in our company to uh, go from the idea to the to the market. Okay, so that's why the name is in industrialization of ultrafast fiber layers. So the uh, talk will be um, structured as follows. Briefly, I will introduce our company, Fila. Then I uh, will give a general description of the management to uh, industrialize this technology from uh, our company uh, perspective. Uh, based in the uh, technology readiness level uh, model that I'm sure all of you know, but I think I can give a perspective of, uh, of, our, of the real um, of the real uh, road from the beginning to the end from our uh, experience. And then uh, once I have uh, explain the general model, I will uh, mm, specifically uh, explain how we have uh, developed that model in, in, uh, in uh, the three families of our, uh, of our, of our product. Probably, since I want to be short, uh, I will be focused uh, more on one of them and then some examples of the others, okay? So, um, Fila is a company based in Valencia. Uh, we are 20 minutes by car from here. Uh, we, uh, uh, well, company was released in 2014. Uh, very now in April we, we will we will have five years old, and um, we are pretty happy because uh, we are uh, growing. Uh, the company now has more than 15 people working on on with us. Uh, very recently we. Um, uh, we uh, over we <coughs> under underwent the um, uh, second round of uh, funding, so uh, mainly now uh, focused on um, 
on production equipment and uh, production um, uh, facilities uh, and also in commercialization since uh, that's where we are, we, uh, we are growing in that sense. Uh, currently we have uh, seven products in um, um, commercialized, in, in commercialization with uh, more than five in funnel. Those products are uh, both uh, lasers and accessories for the use of these, uh, of these lasers in several applications. Five are in funnel currently in the R&D uh, stage uh, yet and uh, very satisfied of having uh, uh, more than 30 industrial and scientific clients up to now. These are some of, the, uh, uh, of our customers. Uh, we have uh, two types of customers, scientific and industrial. Uh, those which are uh, from, um, well, our first customers have been um, from the uh, scientific, academic uh, uh, world, but uh, these customers have helped us to um, prescribe uh, industries and uh, we are already selling uh, volumes of lasers to uh, some of these industries. Uh, well, in general, um, well, we have uh, applications like a laser microscopy with, a important, with an important uh, customer here that you all may know. Uh, we have um, also developed um, good uh, relationship with industry of the inspection, inspection uh, using supercontinuum uh, super lasers like Multiscan or Standard Profile, uh, Tomra, different um, industries that are using our lasers for uh, inspection in, in uh, food industry, also in uh, automotive industry or, um, or uh, um, inspection, uh, semiconductor inspection. Okay. Those are mainly the ideas. Uh, very recently, we have uh, one uh, nice uh, a tender of a nice uh, pro product for uh, project for CERN. It is a femtosecond uh, fiber laser um, developed, customized for CERN to uh, inspect the uh, damage of the uh, photo detectors that are used in their um, sensors uh, in the accelerators. And uh, well, this is. Uh, mainly uh, the type of uh, customers that we already have. Okay, so going into uh, the uh, topic of, of uh, this talk, uh, the idea is that uh, we are a very young company and uh, we, uh, from the very beginning, were very concerned on how to uh, industrialize our lasers. Uh, we had to um, incorporate, to implement um, some um, expertise on, on this and uh, we decided to uh, follow uh, the path of the uh, technology readiness uh, level model which uh, of course I understand that many of you uh, know well about it but the idea is to go from the, uh, from the very um, first stages of the technology, the idea, the concept which is TRL1, uh, basic principles are observed indeed up to uh, the actual commercial version of, of the product of that technology. We, uh, in, in that uh, flow, uh, we, uh, uh, we divide uh, the levels in four blocks, which uh, you will see that uh, are related to our scheme of, uh, of decision of uh, that flow is um, the this is the, 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 uh, the concept of how we um, decide to implement uh, a given technology and why we uh, decide to go into, into commercialization of that, of that product. So, uh, first block is um, from one to three. It is a block that um, in, involves um, the going from basic principles to, a, to an actual proof of concept. Um, TRL4 is uh, mm, to validate that technology in lab, uh, which implies um, a pre-prototype of, of that, of that uh, technology. Then uh, 5 to 6 is uh, the real validation in relevant environment. By relevant environment, we understand uh, an environment which is relevant for our customer, where our customer is using this technology. 
And then uh, last step from seven to nine is uh, all those activities that had to do with manufacturing processes, implementation, regulation, quality inspection, so that we can uh, offer uh, a really, uh, a really um, um, reliable product to our customers. So uh, each of these blocks has a different nature, of course. Uh, indeed, indeed this, uh, this whole, ch oh sorry, this, this process uh, takes several years. Indeed, uh, I'm going to explain one of the one of, as an example, one that indeed began in 2009 and in 2018 is when we are uh, really um, uh, um, commercializing that product. So five to ten years is uh, the cycle that we get from the idea to, to, to the product. Each of these blocks, as I said, has different nature, so that implies that it has different um, uh, type of activities, different type of people involved from the company into that activity, different type of uh, resources required, and also uh, different type of collaboration with partners. Okay, so mainly that's the idea of this of this uh, scheme to explain you what are different um, um, <coughs> um, stakeholders that uh, that that uh, appear in each of these blocks. So one to three is basic principles to experimental proof of, proof of concept. So our model is to uh, rely on public funding. Okay, here funding comes from uh, open basic R and D. We partner with academia, and uh, the people involved from, from our company into these activities is the R and D team. Okay, they are very highly specialized and have uh, a specific know-how on this technology. Then this is a first uh, checkpoint. Checkpoint to, uh, okay, we have achieved in a given uh, technology uh, proof of concept. Should we um, go into next steps? Okay, then we make a question to ourselves. Is it, this technology is really, uh, can, can it really be industrialized? Um, we, well, we, you can understand that uh, some technologies are very promising, but there are several bottlenecks that you can identify very soon and say, okay, that's not reliable. We cannot, or, or from our point of view, we do not have the resources to, uh, to, to uh, be sure that we can really industrialize that technology. Then if this question, the answer is no, then we do not go forward. If the answer is yes, we go forward. Then we move to TRL4, uh, which is mainly to um, make mm, to uh, to define objectives more oriented uh, with regard to that technology, uh, so that um, we are already <coughs> making about funding. The uh, the model is to have uh, private and and, and uh, our own resources funding. The uh, here it is very important that we begin to um, protect our technology. It is organic R&D. We do not, uh, generally we do not partner with academia in this stage. It is, we have uh, decided that we are going to do our own technology here more oriented. And mainly the resources that we require here are facilities, equipment uh, for, for developing this. Okay, once this is uh, validated, uh, this is the most important question. Uh, okay, we have achieved this TRL4, this four level. Are we going to commit uh, to industrialize this technology? And questions, the, the question um, implies both the uh, business and the technology stakeholders and the many, many, many factors to decide that. But in summary, these are the factors. Um, if there is a business case and really a market pool, which in our, how we do understand market pool is a real, uh, real customers willing to pay for that, uh, then uh, these uh, two answers are, uh, uh, are um, sorry, these questions are answered positively. But in parallel, it has to be clear that we have a freedom to operate uh, of this technology. I mean, the industrial, uh, the uh, intellectual property has to be strong enough. We need to um, uh, be sure that our stakeholders are reliable. 
by stakeholders is the analysis of our suppliers. Uh, we uh, suppliers. Uh, 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 it is important to have not only one supplier but several or uh, to have a, mm, a good um, a good agreement with a very with a, with um, key suppliers which you you know that in this technology uh, are very um, are not uh, there are not many suppliers for for given technologies also by stakeholders i mean uh, our <coughs> Our funding uh, stakeholders, uh, do we have really a good path uh, to fund this, this technology? And finally, also very important is to have a solid network of scientific and industrial partners that can be our prescribers for this technology. If the answer is yes, then we go to the next stages, which is why <laughs> mainly it is important because if we go this way, there is, is, there is a, in principle no uh, no return, and we have to uh, fund this technology privately. Okay, and that means uh, be very sure that this technology uh, has has a, a, at least a given extent of of, of success, uh, of probability of success. These uh, last um, stages imply, uh, in the case of uh, five to six, which is validating that technology in in the uh, customer environment, in the industrial customer environment. Uh, it has to be validated and demonstrated by beta testing, working with industrial partner, partners or key customers, customers with which we have, uh, with which we have um, uh, a special relationship, and then go to three, TRL 7 to 9, to go up to commercial version, going through, uh, well, uh, especially up to quality inspection, regulations, safety, operations, etc. Et Is that meaning that I have to shorten my time? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's what happens when one has the uh, last, uh, the last uh, talk. But uh, anyway, I'm going to shorten. Okay, so going from that general picture to a specific um, example of uh, uh, one of the families of our lasers that we do and how we have gone from one to three uh, TRL to to nine. This is um, this is an example. Okay, uh, it is this is the product that we have um, developed, uh, which is a fiber laser comb uh, with a specific with a with a specific city compared to our competitors. That makes it very uh, very. Um, um, uh, singular, it is the uh, fact that the pulse repetition rate is of very high repetition rates. It is not usual this in, in, in fiber lasers. Okay? Uh, it has the highest quality signal uh, from our point of view from the market, both in amplitude and phase. And uh, it delivers multiple carriers and very long term stable emission, typically for these applications. Applications like uh, time domain terahertz, high quality ROF signal generation. Photonic digital radar, PDC. All right. So, going into the different stages, uh, first stage implied going from concept to proof of concept. Uh, it was basic research, uh, theoretical and experimental works on active and passive architectures. And we had the outcome, outcome of, uh, of achieving really pulses with frequencies of tens of megahertz and pulse widths below one picosecond. That triggered um, the idea to go to next TRL. Uh, we worked in uh, collaboration with academic partners and public funding, as I said before, both uh, national and European. And then uh, this TRL 4 took, uh, which was um, the basis to next uh, stage of TRLs, uh, took close to three years and we validated in lab uh, the, uh, the, the the uh, properties that we were looking for because we decided here to have a more focused research to uh, develop very short monolithic all fiber solitonic cavities uh, with the objective of uh, getting at least one gigahertz repetition rate with very very nice uh, phase uh, noise figures and in the frame of uh, already organic R&D uh, we uh, have patented this this technology um, funding was a uh, mixture, public and private, uh, and the uh, strong investment of new facilities was needed 
in our lab. Okay, these are uh, optical spectrum, the autocorrelation auto trace of of the uh, of the signal and the electric spectrum once it is photodetected uh, with uh, the electric fundamental harmonic. Well, um, next stage. Next stage when we decided our um, company decided uh, that we were going to uh, invest money on commercializing this technology. We were convinced and uh, this stage describes TRL 5 to 6, uh, implying all these, these activities that I said before. Uh, we had the business case validated, market pool confirmed, then uh, we got key customers involved and well, we worked hard on have really long-term stability and robustness uh, for this uh, technology to be uh, to be uh, adopted by by the uh, by the uh, market. These are some examples of uh, average uh, power stability uh, uh, after several hours. Also spectral stability, uh, very good uh, figures. But this is definitely not enough. Uh, <coughs> Our customers, and especially some of them, are very, very strict on, on robustness. And I have a, I think this is a, this is a um, video which is very representative of what uh, I mean by by robustness. Uh, this is one of of the prototypes of the of the laser. We are giving their uh, strong shocks and uh, to the to the laser and, uh, and in parallel uh, uh, checking the spectrum. That spectrum, as you see, is not uh, changing and the shocks are completely, um, <laughs> completely uh, random and with no, um, with no real uh, 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 pattern uh, to, to uh, really be sure that the laser is, 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 is robust enough. Did the person who did this had not permission to do this, <laughs> but he decided to, so this is why I put it. Okay, so I think I am going to move uh, uh, to the last slides of the, of, the, um, of the presentation because we don't have too much time. But well, here you can see this is the last stage of, of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, technology readiness level uh, block uh, to assemble to uh, uh, to go through processes of, uh, of uh, quality inspection of quality um, um, standardization and uh, processes of quality of uh, of, um, of, of, uh, of uh, certification sorry and uh, well what happens beyond okay so um, also if you want to send your product to uh, any customer, uh, this is uh, what you have to do. Go to, uh, go to several standard reporting uh, and well, you can see vibration tests and how the laser survives those vi vibration tests. Okay, these are, I'm not going into this because we don't have time, but uh, well, this is the idea of customer satisfaction, okay? Some applications were uh, where supercontinuum super lasers are being used uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, microscopy imaging. And uh, well, uh, this is uh, as a conclusion. I have uh, explained our model of industrialization of ultra-fast fiber lasers. And uh, uh, in specific, I have uh, explained uh, how we have industrialized the uh, ultra-fast laser comps. So thank you very much for your attention. and. Uh, I'm open to questions. Questions from the audience to the speaker? Do we have any questions? Yeah, the fiber lasers have really disrupted the, let's call it solid state laser market 15 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you know how a disruptive technology that is, I think a factor of 10 cheaper, more robust, mm -hmm. a little bit more compact, how that can really be a game changer. Um, so if you look at, uh, maybe you don't do photonic integration, but if you look at what's happening out there in photonic integration, to which extent do you see that as a threat 
for the, mm-hmm. let's say, the more bulky fiber laser market? Mm-hmm. Well, um, the answer to that uh, has to do with what I said in the beginning. Okay, uh, I think, I think, uh, I don't see a photonic integration as a competitor. I see it more as a, uh, in some terms it is, uh, but in some others I find a uh, lot of, a uh, um, lot of places where to merge both technologies and to cooperate into uh, going to, to, to new products that can um, be uh, adopted by the, by the market. For instance, I think that uh, regarding, regarding um, comms, fiber laser comms, uh, photonic integration is uh, evolving to uh, really reliable and good um, uh, sources of, of, of comms. But in some, in some markets, uh, these, uh, these uh, circuits um, are not going to be, or at least I think, are not going to be uh, competitors because uh, the noise. Noise in some applications is very important and the uh, phase and amplitude noise of uh, fiber of uh, integrated uh, laser comps is, is not enough for some for some markets but they are definitely enough for markets as telecom for instance not for photonic analog to digital conversion. So there are there, there is room for both technologies to go to go in parallel but there are others where I think they will merge, and we are uh, making for them to merge in our company. Uh, and again, going to the to the idea of, uh, I mean, to the to the market of uh, of comms, we have clearly identified a uh, need of uh, reducing the form factor of our lasers, and um, I th- and and there, uh, photonic integration has a lot to do uh, to uh, to uh, help us to. Uh, deliver lasers in that sense. I think that, I hope I answered, uh, but we can discuss afterwards if you want uh, more on this. More questions from the audience? Hey, I think we can uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you. Okay, with this, and I'm going to be very brief, we're closing uh, Photonic Integration Week 2019 sessions. There's still a lunch and still a business-to-business uh, meetings if you want after lunch. So maybe, Sergio, you want to just uh, refresh uh, people with what we have. Okay. Just, just to show you the, the agenda of the booked B2B meetings uh, for 3 o'clock, 3.30 and, and 4 o'clock. These are the pre-booked uh, ones, but if you want to meet with uh, another one, please just tell me and I will look for, for a place to do the meeting. And, and that's it. Uh, let's go for, for the lunch. Okay, lunch first to take energy and then <laughs> meetings. Thank you.